Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is resistive complex impedance. Our objective is to learn how to represent resistors as complex impedances for the purposes of AC circuit analysis. This lecture operates on the presumption that the viewer has more than a passive familiarity with complex numbers, as illustrated in the previous lectures available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only didn't recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. You are no doubt familiar with the DC response of resistors, capacitors, and inductors. In summary, resistors follow Ohm's law, a phenomenon that relates voltage, current, and resistance. Resistors dissipate all power supplied to them in the form of heat and are not energy storage devices. Even our initial discussions of resistors and sinusoidal AC sources demonstrated that resistors consistently follow Ohm's law and voltage and current are in phase with one another. Capacitors and inductors, in contrast, are reactive elements and can momentarily store and return energy. As such, the reactive nature of these energy storage devices need to be accounted for. Recall from our discussions about the time-variant DC response of capacitors that initially uncharged capacitors experience a current spike followed by rising voltage. This behavior can be summarized as current leading voltage for capacitive elements and that the current spike occurs before rising voltage. The time constant established by the capacitive circuit under inspection determines how slow or fast this exchange of energy occurs. Similarly, recall from our discussion on the time variant DC response of inductors that inductors with no established magnetic field experience a voltage spike followed by rising current. This behavior can be summarized as current lagging voltage for inductive elements and that the current rise occurs only after the voltage spike. As with capacitors, the time constant established by the inductive circuit under inspection determines how slow or fast this exchange of energy occurs. For purposes of time variant DC analysis, we never really explored beyond these horizons. If, however, we push the boundaries into circuits incorporating sinusoidal AC sources, sources that continuously change, there is no initial nor steady state and reactive elements like capacitors and inductors will continuously store and discharge energy on a cyclical basis. Despite this constant interchange, one truth remains constant. Current will be in phase with voltage for purely resistive elements. Current will continuously lead voltage for purely capacitive elements, and current will continuously lag voltage for inductive elements. We'll examine this phase-shifted response in greater detail in later lectures. The reactive nature of elements in AC circuit analysis are accounted for using one of two tools. One, either time-consuming calculus-based techniques, or two, simple algebraic techniques making use of complex numbers. My choice is to employ complex numbers. Bottom line up front, resistors, capacitors, and inductors can be represented as complex impedances, where impedance is a term quasi-equivalent to resistance for the purposes of DC circuit analysis. Only the complex nature of impedance includes time-shifted effects for purposes of AC circuit analysis. The true nature of complex impedance will only become apparent in later lectures. However, we at least need to learn to calculate complex impedance for now. Resistors, when represented as complex impedances, are elements entirely in the positive horizontal real X plane. Frequency of the AC source has no effect on the magnitude of the resistive complex impedance. As such, a resistor represented as a complex impedance can be calculated as the resistance value at an angle of zero when represented using polar format. When depicted in the impedance domain, resistors exist solely on the real horizontal x-axis proportional to the resistor's magnitude. If you wanted to represent resistive complex impedance using rectangular format, it would be proportional to R existing solely in the real horizontal x-axis plus or minus j times zero. Since we're representing the complex impedance of resistors using a complex number, note the value ZR includes an overbar, indicating this isn't just a magnitude, but also includes a direction. Capacitors, in contrast, when represented as complex impedances, are elements that exist entirely in the negative vertical imaginary y-axis. Frequency the AC source does have effect on the magnitude of capacitive impedance using the following formula. Z of C, note the overbar, equals 1 over 2 pi times the frequency in units of hertz times the capacitance in units of farads at an angle of negative 90 degrees when represented using polar format. When depicted in the impedance domain, 
Capacitors exist solely in the negative imaginary vertical y-axis proportional to 1 over 2 pi fc. We'll examine capacitive complex impedance in an upcoming lecture. Finally, inductors, when represented as complex impedances, are elements that exist entirely in the positive vertical imaginary y-axis. Frequency of the AC source does have effect on the magnitude of inductive impedance using the following formula. Z of L, note the overbar, equals 2 pi times the frequency in units of hertz times the inductance in units of henrys at an angle of positive 90 degrees when represented using polar format. When depicted in the impedance domain, inductors exist solely in the positive imaginary vertical y-axis proportional to 2 pi fl. We'll examine inductive complex impedance in an upcoming lecture. You note the units of complex impedance, regardless of the resistive, capacitive, or inductive nature of the element in question, are always expressed in units of ohms. Only direction gives some clue as to the resistive, capacitive, or inductive characteristics. Purely resistive elements have a magnitude in units of ohms proportional to R at an angle of zero. Purely capacitive elements have a magnitude in units of ohms proportional to 1 over 2 pi fc at an angle of negative 90 degrees. Purely inductive elements have a magnitude in units of ohms proportional to 2 pi fl at an angle of positive 90 degrees. Additionally, note capacitors and inductors are essentially mirror images of one another, with 180 degree differential between them, a fact we'll use to our advantage in industrial applications like power factor correction in later lectures. As an illustrated example of application of this principle, consider a 220 ohm resistor subjected to sinusoidal AC voltage with a frequency of 60 Hz. Let's calculate the complex impedance of this resistor. The resistor, for our introductory purposes, is essentially immune to the effects of frequency and as such has a magnitude of 220 ohms at an angle of 0 degrees expressed using polar format. Absolutely no calculations are necessary. Take the resistance value and stick an at an angle of 0 behind it and call it good. Easy, right? Maybe. A couple of you may have made this unnecessarily complicated, but it really is as easy as it looks. Take the given resistance value and stick at an angle of zero behind it and call it good. We'll examine the slightly more involved calculation of complex impedance for capacitors and inductors in later lectures, but today, rest easy knowing that resistive complex impedance really is as easy as I'm telling you. Ordinarily, I walk you through a couple of illustrated example problems and give you a couple to work out on your own, but this is a waste of your and my time. To calculate the complex impedance of a resistor, take the given resistance value and stick at an angle of zero degrees behind it and call it good. We'll revisit this topic in later lectures and discuss the significance of angles in complex impedance when we examine AC Ohm's law. As a preview of this topic, note that current through a resistor is always in phase with the voltage across it. While the magnitude of resistive complex impedance accounts for the amount of current that may flow, the real horizontal nature of resistive complex impedance accounts for this in-phase response of current. As I said, we'll examine all this and more in later lectures. In conclusion, this lecture examined resistive complex impedance. We learned that even a snowboarder has a reasonable chance of calculating resistive complex impedance correctly on the rare event they show up to class sober and on time. The complex impedance of a resistor is equal to the magnitude of the resistance R at an angle of zero degrees. Remember to review these concepts as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.